In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a student survey in Google Classroom. So here I am in my Spanish 2 class, and let's say it's the end of the year or maybe the end of a unit, and I would like my students to fill out a survey to help me know what they learned and maybe what their favorite and least favorite units of study were and what they liked most about the class. To do this, I would start on the Classwork tab and just click Create. And I could make this an assignment. I could certainly give points for them filling out the survey. But in this case, I think I'll just create it as material for them to look at and interact with. So I'll call this end of year survey. I can put in a description for the survey. And then all I have to do next is go down here underneath the description and either click to add a survey that I've already built using Google Forms. I could find that by going here to Google Drive, and then I could search for the form title here in this box, and then add the pre-existing form. But let's say I don't have a survey form already created. All I have to do is click this Create button, choose Forms, and it creates a blank Google Forms survey. So at this point in this new tab, I'm no longer in Google Classroom. I'm actually in Google Forms. And if you want to learn all about Google Forms, including how to turn these forms into an actual quiz or a test, not just a survey, you should watch my other tutorials on Google Forms. I think you'll like them. But at this point, I just want to build a new Google Form from scratch. I'll title this End of Year Survey. Now you might think I've already done that. Well, no, I named the material, but now I need to also name the survey. And I choose to make it the same name. I can put a description and then go down to my first question and just type it in right here in the box. You can either make this a multiple choice question or a short answer question. I think in this case, both of those would work well. You can see there are many other options in addition to multiple choice and short answer. And again, if you want to learn about these, watch my Google Forms tutorial. I'll just make this multiple choice and I'll put in three options. If I want to, I can add images to go with the words or I can just stick to text. I can go down here and make this a required question, and then I can simply move on and ask question number two in my survey. In this case, question number two is gonna be similar to question number one, so I'm just gonna go here and click duplicate, and I'll change favorite to least favorite. That quickly, I'm done with question two, and I'll add a third question. I'll make this short answer. Again, I should make it required probably, and let's say my survey's done. I can just click, it automatically named it based on what I had typed here. And at this point, I can click send. But before I do, I just want to point out where the students' responses will come to you. And that is right here on the responses tab. Also, before I click send, I want to show you that it is possible to dress up your survey a little bit. You can make it look a little fancier by clicking here on customize theme. You can change the color scheme, and you can also change or add a header. When I click on Choose Image, it brings up all of these different headers that I could easily add to my Google Forms survey. Maybe I'll go down to Travel and see if there's anything good there. I guess I'll go with this one here, click Insert, and then I can even preview what this will look like for my students. Okay, back in the survey, I'm going to click Send just to show you that you could send this to specific people. I could send this to parents. I could send it to students that are no longer currently in my Google Classroom. But for any student that's in my Google Classroom, all I really need to do is X out of the survey. It takes me back to Google Classroom, and there's my form. Yes, it says untitled, but don't worry about that. It will update eventually. So all I have to do is go up here and make sure that these settings are correct. Right now, it's going to be posted for all Spanish 2 students. If I want to, I could include my other classes as well. Also, I could survey specific students, not just all students, and I could add this to a specific topic in my course. Maybe I'll create a topic called surveys, and then I could click post, or if I want to, I could click this drop-down arrow and schedule this, not to be posted today, but to be posted in a week, in a month, in a year, whatever. At this point, though, I'm just gonna click post, and this will be immediately available for all of my students to take this survey in this brand new section that I just created. Now let's look at this survey that's been posted, but let's look at it from the student perspective. Here I am now in a student account, and if I look at either the stream or the classwork tabs, I can see that there's a survey, end of year survey, 
And here in stream, there it is, end of year survey. So as a student, I can just click on it. Notice that it's titled properly, and I can just click end of year survey. It opens it up. There's the theme that I chose when I was in the teacher account. And as a student now, I can just consider each of these questions. And then the student just clicks submit. The response has been recorded, and the student can now X out. Students can also make comments on the survey and click here to post them. Now let's switch back to the teacher account. And look, I can tell that one person has made a comment on the survey. To see the responses, I can just click on the survey title. It opens up Google Forms. And then I can click this button to edit the form and also to look at the responses. If I had a lot more responses, you would see some really interesting graphs and charts to help me understand the students' responses. In the case of this short answer question, all of the short answers would be listed here so I could see them. And so this is how I can gain some real insight from my students or from parents or whomever I invite to participate in this survey. In addition to looking at these summaries, I can also click question to see each question one at a time and to see the responses. Up here at the top right, notice that there's an option to make it so that you're no longer accepting responses. Maybe the students have until June 1st to complete this survey, and then after that, I don't want any changes to the survey results, so I can just turn off this switch. When I'm done looking at the survey, I can just X out of it, and I'm right back in the other tab in Google Classroom. So that's how you can make surveys available for your students to answer, and you can gather the results and look at them, and you can do all of this from within Google Classroom. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, click the bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified whenever I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do that through my Patreon account, and you'll see a link to that in the description below.